Okay, today we are doing lesson 3-14, module 3, lesson 14. Your learning goal today on Jack's birthday is to be able to use strategies to solve multi-term problems. Problems means math question. Multi-term means there's more than one number. You know how sometimes when we add, there's just two numbers, like 3 and a half plus 4 and 5, 6? Two things to add. Multi-term, each one of those is a term. So multi-term means you might be adding three things or four things or five things. Does it get more complicated when we add more things, more terms? Does it get harder? No. no. Does it get more complicated? Yeah. yeah. So today we're going to see if we can find some strategies to help make it less complicated. We already know it's not hard. We just need to make it less complicated. Let's go ahead and copy this problem into our notebooks. Two thirds plus one fifth plus one third plus one and four fifths. Now before we start to solve it, let's analyze it first. How many terms does this problem have? Show me with your fingers. Yeah, it has four terms. If we count, we can see one term, two terms, three terms, four terms. So we could do two thirds plus one fifth and find the total, and then we could add one third to that total, and then we can add one and four fifths to that total. But is there a better way? Mm -hmm. How can we solve this problem mentally? Aaliyah? Um, with the, with the we could look at the ones that have common denominator. So we have two thirds and one third. Can I um, rearrange the order of addition problems? Yes. What property allows me to do that? Yes. The commutative property. Thank you, Reagan, for raising your hand. So I'm going to commute the ones that have thirds in the denominator together. So two thirds plus one third next to each other. And then in my head, I'm also going to think about one fifth and one and four fifths. Mm -hmm. Now when I have the de same denominator <coughs> next to each other, does that help me do this in my head? Mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, a lot. What's two thirds plus one third? One. one. What's one? And four fifths plus one fifths. Two. So one plus two is? Three. So can we use the strategy of using the commutative property in our head to solve these problems mentally? That would really help, huh? What, isn't this a lot easier than trying to figure out the LCD of three and five and then adding two thirds plus one fifth and finding equivalent fractions and then adding another one third and adding one and four fifths later? Yeah. Isn't this easier? Yeah. Cool. This time we have subtraction. Write this problem in your notebook. Five and seven eighths minus one half, minus seven eighths, minus one and one half. Now, can we commute problems around like that? No. Can we commute the terms? No. no, there's no commutative property of subtraction, so we can't do that. But is there anything we could do? What's the grand total that we're starting out with? Five and seven eighths. Now, can I take away seven eighths from that first? Yes. That would get rid of this part, huh? Now, do we know what 5 minus 1 half is in our head? Yeah. What is that? 4 and 1 half, huh? So then we're left with 4 and 1 half minus 1 and 1 half. Do the 1 halves kind of cancel each other out? Yeah. And we're left with 4 minus 1, which is? 3. three. Okay. Isn't that easier than finding the LCD? Now, I know in this case, finding the LCD isn't too bad, right? Because we know that 1 half is 4 eighths. But then... Look how we were able to solve this in our head, okay? So we could either use the commutative property of addition to help us, or we can look for patterns in the fractions. This one has subtraction and addition. So let's see how that affects the problem. First of all, let's analyze. How many terms does this um, problem have? Three. Three, yeah, one term, two terms, three terms. Okay, so let's see. Is there any way that we can think about and group these numbers together to make it easier to think about in our head? Arhan? So there's a, there's a one fifth and one five six. Ooh, there's a one and then a two and five six. You can add those together and you get three. If we add two and five six plus one six, that equals three. Now, even though it says to do it mentally, I want you to write out what you're thinking in your head because I can't see what you're doing mentally. Okay, so if you can write out one six plus two and five six equals three, and then what are we left with? We still have to subtract. One third. So we have three minus one third, and this is what you would write out, which equals two and two thirds. You got it. So that's the answer. Okay. So even though we're solving it mentally, once again, we need to write out what we're thinking about mentally. 
Mm -hmm. So in this case, we have 14 thirds plus blank space, Taylor Swift, plus 9 fourths equals 8 and 11 twelfths. So our job is to figure out who, what blank, what Taylor Swift is going to write in that blank space. Okay? So how can we figure that out? How can we figure that out? We know that 14 thirds plus something plus 9 fourths is going to equal 8 and 11 twelfths. How can I figure out what belongs in that blank space? Lakshan? Uh, okay, I can add 14 thirds and 9 fourths. And then plus something, right? This is what we know. Plus something is going to equal 8 and 11 twelfths. How, did, how is what I wrote different than what the problem stated? How is what I wrote different? Alina? Yeah, I just used the commutative property to move the 9 fourths closer to my other, and I moved the blank space to the end. So let's add. Are we ready to add 14 thirds plus 9 fourths? Now we need to find an LCD. What would the LCD be? 12. Oh, nice. Okay, good. Okay, so let's multiply by some versions of 1. 14 thirds times what version of 1 will equal a denominator of 12? 4 over 4. Good. And then 9 fourths times what version of 1 will give us the denominator of 12? 3 thirds. Okay. So when we add that together, we get, what's 14 times 4? 56 twelfths. What's 9 times 3? 27 twelfths. Good. So what's 56 twelfths? Add plus 27 twelfths. Reagan? 83 what? 83 twelfths. Good. Is that more than 1? Yeah, way more. How many holes do I have? I know that 5 twelfths is 60, and then from there if I add another 12, 6 twelfths is 72. Can I get to 8 twelfths? No. Okay, so I have 7, twelve, seven holes and 11 twelfths, right? Okay, so so far I know if I was drawing a tape diagram, I know that this part is equal to 7 and 11 twelfths. So now what I know is that 7 and 11 twelfths plus something will equal 8 and 11 twelfths. Huh. What is missing in that blank space in order to go from 7 and 11 twelfths to 8 and 11 twelfths? Lakshan? Um, one. one. So the answer is one. one. Fabulous fail. Thank you. Eight and 11, 83 twelfths is not 7 and 11 twelfths. It's 6 and 11 twelfths, which means our correct answer needs to be Thank you for helping me find my fail. I've drawn this problem into a tape diagram now. I know that I have some unknown total amount, but if I take away 15 from it and then take away 4.5 from it, I'll end up with 7 and 3 fifths. So how can I find out what my unknown blank space amount is? Lauren? You got it. If I add up all these parts, I'll find out how big the total part is, right? So I have to add 15 plus 4 and a half plus 7 and 3 fifths.